I love udon noodles. You guys do as well because these are some of my most popular recipes on my channel. But how about this little collection here, which has udon noodles but faster. Spicy, peanutty chicken noodles. This one is so comforting. Ah, oh, one of my all time favorite noodle recipes. First off, let's talk about the noodles. So I'm using udon noodles. I love their thick, fat, like chewy texture. So usually you'll find them in these little packets and you just pull them out and these guys are already cooked, but what you don't wanna do is break them up while they're in this kind of cake-like state because they just fall apart. So the best way to deal with them is pop them in some boiling water. Now just let them soak in their little hot tub there for a few seconds. And now get your tongs, pick them up and just gently kind of shake. So just shake, shake, and push them around a little until they start to release. And as soon as they are loose, pull them straight out into a bowl. Now, if you're gonna let these guys sit around for a long time, um, just toss a little bit of sesame oil in there so they stay nice and loose. But I'm gonna use these fairly quickly, so I'm just gonna leave them alone. The next thing I want is some Szechuan peppercorns. And I love these peppercorns. They have this kind of really beautiful high citrusy flavor, as well as a kind of numbing, tingling kind of thing that happens on your tongue. Very cool. You could just use black peppercorns if you can't get a hold of these. I do love them though. So a few of those, just gonna grind them up. And now for the spring onion, I'm going to separate the pale part from the green part. I often like to do this because I think the pale part has a stronger oniony flavor and I like to infuse the oil in my stir fry with that. And then the milder green part gets sprinkled on at the end. And another one of my aromatics I'm gonna use is some ginger. And I'm just gonna finely grate that over the pale part of the spring onion because they're all gonna go in together anyway. Okay, so here's the special part, guys. Instead of having and making a separate chili oil that we would drizzle on at the end, we're gonna make a really quick one in the wok before we add in the chicken and the noodles and everything else. Saves loads of time. Okay, so you want your heat fairly low for this because I need to kind of bloom the aromatics and the spices. And by blooming, I mean just kind of heating them through, releasing their aromas without cooking them too much. And I want a decent amount of oil in here. And then in goes the Szechuan peppercorns and some chili powder and then a couple of star anise. These guys are gonna infuse the oil and the sauce with a really beautiful, subtle flavor. So just let these spices really gently bubble away in that oil. You wanna give them a couple of minutes. Now add in your garlic and the spring onion and the ginger. Mm. And this smell, guys, it is unbelievable. So yummy. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this so aromatic. And that's our special little chili oil done there. So now we're ready for the chicken. So I'm using chicken mince today, but you can use pork mince, turkey mince, beef mince. They'll all go very well in this. Okay, at this point you can turn the heat up now because I want to cook that chicken through. Now once that chicken is almost cooked through, I'm going to add in my soy sauce and some peanut butter. So this is what's gonna give us that really creamy, peanutty flavor to our sauce. You'll be surprised at how beautiful this little peanut addition is. And some chicken stock. So this is gonna be quite liquidy here, um, but that's okay, that's what we want. It'll all work out in the end, trust me. Just blend that peanut butter and the chicken stock and everything through. And I wanna let this gently simmer just a couple of minutes so the star anise has time to release some flavor and that chicken cooks all the way through. And just to thicken things up a little bit and give everything a bit of a gloss, I'm gonna add some corn flour that I've mixed with a little bit of water. Give that a stir. Okay, so this is looking really good. I'm gonna take my star anise out and I'll slide those noodles into that bubbling sauce. And I just wanna toss this through until those noodles are warmed through. Ah, oh, these smell so good. I tell you what, so much quicker than making spaghetti bolognese from scratch. And then right at the end, I wanna drizzle over some sesame oil so I really keep that intense sesame flavor. Noodles in my bowl. And you want plenty of that chicken peanutty sauce. And then finally, a sprinkling of spring onion on top. And there you go, my friends. That is one super quick noodle dish, but the flavor, ah. Oh, telling you, you will never be able to go back to spaghetti bolognese after this. Mm. So good. 
Okay friends, so we're going with a very classic Italian carbonara method, but we're gonna throw down some udon noodles. One, because they cook quicker, and two, because they just taste really good in carbonara. <laughs> uh, let's get going on the sauce part first of all. So what I need to do here is crack some fresh peppercorns. Like this dish, like there's not much going on here. So everything needs to be really beautiful. Um, so we wanna go with fresh peppercorns here. And I wanna keep the pepper quite chunky. I want like a coarse grind here so I can really taste that like hot pepper flavor. Well, not too hot, it's not like overpowering, but anyway, the coarse texture is what I want. I'm just gonna do a bit extra for what I need for the dish because I wanna sprinkle some more on at the end. So that's what you're looking for. And you want about a teaspoon into your bowl here. Now into that bowl with the pepper, I wanna add some eggs. So we're going three whole eggs here, and then I think the real secret to like a really creamy carbonara, because of course, with the traditional method, you don't add any cream. Uh, the creaminess comes from the eggs and the emulsion and the fats and all the things that happen in the pan a bit later on. But to really kind of amp up the richness or the lusciousness, I'm gonna add two extra egg yolks only. And to that, you want to add a whole lot of cheese. <laughs> I'm using a really good Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese here. Pecorino would be great as well. Um, and I just, you just want a lot of it. Way more than you would think. Okay, so once you have your huge mountain of cheese and you are like out of breath from grating cheese, <laughs> you just wanna give that a bit of a whisk. Okay, so that's like most of our sauce done. The real magic happens a bit later on, as I said, but just set that aside for a minute. Now what we need is some good, chunky bits of cured pork. So I'm using speck because that was what was available in my um, supermarket, but the more traditional cured pork would be guanciale um, or pancetta. Uh, but the key is you wanna be able to get a big hunk of something because just little thin strips of bacon, that's just not gonna cut it. You'll see what I mean. I'm gonna cut the skin off this one because I don't want it that to kind of leather up or get very tough in the pan. And then you want some really thick slices here and then some really thick battens of pork. All right, so these are the kind of chunks that you're after. And it's important that you've got a bit of fat in there because it's like the emulsion of the fat and the egg and the cheese and the, and the noodle cooking water that's gonna give you the creamy sauce without the cream. Um, so what you wanna do here is um, just get a frying pan heating up and Pop your chunky bits of pork into the pan. And you wanna let these guys sizzle away in here until we kind of get like a really decent amount of fat rendered out. Um, and also until those little pieces are just like starting to turn nice and golden. So once your cured pork is looking a little bit like this and you've got kind of like an obscene amount of fat in the bottom of the pan there, that's when you know you're good. Um, oh, and just as, as an aside, if your cured pork it was really lean and you don't have much of that fat, just add a little bit of olive oil in there. Um, so that is ready to go. Just leave that just keeping warm, you know, turn the heat off, but just leave it there. Now we're gonna cook our noodles. So I've got some boiling water here. Now, the worst thing we could do right now is overcook our noodles. And I'm using these packet udon noodles because they're just really good to keep in the pantry and they take 60 seconds to heat up and get ready to go. Um, so I just leave them in for like 30. <laughs> Don't cook them too long at all. Just pull them out. And when that water's really boiling, just pop it in. And just as those noodles separate, just pull them out, pop them straight in with your pork. Now, while everything's still warm in here, I don't have the heat on, so leave the heat off. I'm gonna pour in my eggs.
Now just grab a little half cup full of that noodle cooking water. That guy is gonna help us with creating the sauce. Now just keep swirling, shaking that pan. And actually I'm gonna put the heat on a little bit here as well. And the idea here is you just keep, keep that action. Just keep swirling around and that kind of is gonna emulsify that sauce. And I want the sauce to get really nice and thick. Now watch your heat here. If the heat's too hot, uh, you will end up with scrambled eggs. Still tastes fine, but doesn't look so good. Okay guys, I reckon we're like two minutes in here and I have been very gently and patiently heating this sauce. And have a look. I mean, look at, look at that. Look at how creamy and shiny and luscious that is. I mean, that just, I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. That's crazy good. Oh, that looks so good. All right, now we wanna pop this out into a bowl. And just a little extra sprinkling of black pepper here. And there you go, friends. Udon, carbonara, the cheesiest, creamiest thing you'll eat all year. Let's get in here. Oh, wow, this looks so creamy and lush. Oh, look at that. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And it's so creamy and cheesy, like unbelievable. And then you've got big like pops of of uh, you know cured pork and it's like because you use the pork fat it's sort of like the whole thing has that porky cheesy thing going on incredible it's pasta your italian friends will hate creamy garlic prawn udon noodles this stuff is so good i'm just literally too excited for words okay pan heating up it's also really quick so don't go anywhere this is going to happen so quickly all right, olive oil, butter. Don't be stingy on the butter. And just wait for the butter to melt and start doing its kind of foamy sizzling kind of thing. So now I can add in my prawns. A little bit of seasoning here, some salt. A wee pinch of pepper. And just toss those prawns around so they get all like nice and buttery. And now that they're starting to turn opaque, so they're not quite cooked through, but almost, now I'm gonna throw in the garlic. So things are currently smelling garlicky and delicious in here. I mean, if you, you know, the smell of butter alone, but the smell of butter and garlic, mm, something so deliciously wonderful about it. I'm gonna go in here with some white wine. And then you just wanna let that white wine kind of bubble away, get some of that alcohol burning off a little. Okay, things are looking good in here. I always think, you know, you know when people say, oh, just let it simmer until the alcohol burns off. I always find that you can actually smell the alcohol. So when I first put the wine in, I could smell that wine. It was quite a strong smell. And now I'm just coming back to that kind of like beautiful, fragrant, buttery garlic situation. So I know that that wine has done its business now. So I can go in with my cream. And then here's a little interesting extra. Optional, but if you can get it, is really good. This is called yuzu kosho, and it is a fermented citrus and chili paste. It's Japanese, look it up, yuzu kosho. I mean, this stuff is so good. It kind of just adds a really lovely citrusy, lemony kind of tang to the dish. If you can't find it, just pop in some grated lemon zest. That would be a good substitute. Okay, mix all of that in. Now again, let that cream bubble away do its thing, get a little bit thicker. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop up some parsley. And now, sauce is still doing its thing, but I'm gonna pop my noodles into some hot water. And these are just some prepackaged udon noodles. They only need a few minutes in this hot water to loosen up a little bit. Noodles straight in to my pan, parsley, parmesan cheese. And like, you can't really go wrong here with the parmesan cheese. You just, just go for it. No one ever said there was too much cheese, ever. Let's keep stirring here. Now, this is kind of where the magic happens. You start out, the sauce looks a little thin and you're like, ooh, did I make a mistake? No, this is where we get 
the sauce thickening up because it's sort of reacting to those starches in the noodle and the heat is still evaporating the sauce and things will magically get thick and luscious any minute. Okay, I think we are here. Look at that. Ah, it is so thick and creamy and luscious. I mean, that's just, it's just magic. It's pure magic. Ah, oh, look at that. Serve that out into a bowl. Oh, yeah, it's like so good, you have to whisper. <laughs> More cheese, of course. There you go. I mean, I feel incredibly satisfied right now. I haven't even eaten the damn thing yet. <laughs> feeling pretty good about it. I mean, look at that noodle. It's just so shiny and creamy and delicious. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. It's great. I don't often pat myself on the back. We're gonna make curry chicken udon ramen. No, curry chicken udon noodle soup. I've got water for my um, eggs that I'm gonna boil later, water for my noodles. I've got my wok heating up. It's gonna add in a little bit of oil there, get that heating. All right, so I'm just slicing up my onion here. So a couple of things we're gonna be using today to make life a little bit easier. One, we're gonna be using our udon noodles, which you can grab straight out of your pantry. Two, we're gonna be using some Japanese curry paste, lots of different brands and different supermarkets. So just grab one that probably is suitable for your family, like a, you know, a mild, if you've got kitties around, um, you can also get more spicier versions. So I'm gonna be using that. And get my chicken mince in here as well. Don't forget guys, ask me all the questions you want. If you have some requests for maybe dishes that use specific ingredients that you use a lot at home, please do pop those in the comments. I'd love to know, because really this series is supposed to be as handy as possible for you guys. <laughs> now I'm gonna go in with some stock. Some soy sauce, some mirin, and then our curry roux. It even just smells like Japanese curry. Oh, just let that come to a simmer there. All right, I'm just giving this a bit of a stir here just to try and help dissolve our curry blocks. Now have a look at our soup in here. And this is the cool thing about using those curry blocks is that they obviously have a little bit of a thickener in there. And look at that, that already just looks so like wholesome and comforting and lovely and lush. Like it's all shiny and glossy. Oh, that is one really big cheat there. I love that. The water for my noodles looks like it is now boiling. So let me get those in there. I mean, this is looking pretty delicious right now. Let me get in here and try it. Oh, that's so yum. <laughs> it's just like one of those, oh, yum, comforting, like, uh, it's almost like that. And with your udon noodles, they don't require very much time in this, this water. I'm just gonna slice up a little bit of um, seaweed, some nori, which I always seem to have in my pantry as well. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. It's just so thick and glossy and amazing. I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> if you are cooking along with me, I hope you are just as impressed at this point. All right, soup is going on. Now, bits and pieces here. I have a little bit of pickled ginger as well. Got my egg. Moment of truth. The definition of jammy, perfect. Okay, a little bit of your spring onion there, some nori on the side, and then just a few bean shoots as well. Should we get in here? Look at this, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> Wish you guys were here, eating this with me. Okay, let me get in here, and let me see what's going on. It's chewy noodles. Oh yeah, that is so yum. Mm. It's kind of like, you, you get that lovely pickle from the ginger mm. on the chicken and that comforting like gravy sauce is so cool. I hope you loved it. If you were cooking along with me, I hope yours looks just as delicious as mine does.
Because this is a really simple dish, there really isn't anywhere to hide. Everything needs to be perfect. The teriyaki sauce, the noodles, the broth. But I have some really simple ways to make all of these very easy if you follow along. For the teriyaki sauce, you need sake, mirin, soy sauce, and brown sugar, and then heat that up in a small saucepan until it just starts to bubble. Then simmer it for only about three to four minutes. You don't want things to thicken up too much here. I just want the sugar to dissolve. So you'll see this sauce actually will be quite thin and that's exactly the way it should be. The thing you need to look out for is that all the magic is gonna happen in the pan, it's gonna get glazy and syrupy, just wait and see. So let's do our chicken skewers. To make the chicken skewers, just thread the chicken onto some bamboo skewers. Now I'm using chicken thigh here and I've cut it into little bite-sized pieces. You don't want pieces to be too big because that marinade may burn before the middle of the chicken is cooked if everything is too large. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt here. Next, we need to do the dashi broth. This is also a very, very crucial part of the recipe. The broth in this kind of dish is everything. The easiest way to make a really great dashi broth at home is actually to use one of these. Now, these are readily available in most Asian supermarkets or search them out online. They're basically dashi powder sachets. Now, the thing with them though, is that they are a little bit confusing because there's often no English on the packet. So if you have a look here, the pictures on the front will help you out. I know, that's just the reductive way of doing it, but I mean, that's what you're gonna do sometimes. I'm lucky because at my Asian supermarket, there is some English on the back here. What you're looking for is a dashi powder that has at least a fish component and a kelp component. Now, I'm gonna go with the fish and kelp version, and I think this one's really great because it has no MSG. Typically, you need about one sachet to about four cups of water. That's what I found across multiple different brands. So I've got eight cups of water here, so I need two sachets sachets of powder, and this is now our dashi broth, the base of our soup. What I need to do is add extra flavorings for the classic Japanese udon soup broth. So you start out by adding some soy sauce, some mirin, a little dash of sugar. So just look at this dashi broth. I mean, it's just so perfectly clear and beautiful. That color is amazing. The one thing that I do find when you use a non-MSG powder is that you do need to add a fair bit of salt, but what you need to do is try it and then go in with some salt. Ah, so you know, that is perfect. Okay, we are going to do the teriyaki chicken next. So heat up a pan and just coat it with a little bit of vegetable oil. And when it's really hot, add your chicken skewers. Now just let those sear for a minute or so, then flip them over, and now the magic happens. Well, not right away, because you'll start to glaze the chicken and nothing much will be happening in the first instance. But as you keep going, flipping and glazing and sizzling, everything will start to get all caramelly and amazing. As you're going along, use a spoon to capture some of that glaze and drizzle it on the chicken as it cooks. And when your chicken looks something like this, I mean, oh, that is so much gloss. It's like high vis. oh my goodness, I love it. A really good udon noodle is pure joy. I mean, it's thick and chewy and has this like beautiful elasticity to it. To cook them, you just need some boiling water, add the noodles in, cook them only for three or four minutes, that's all they need. As soon as they start to come apart when you use your tongs, that's when they're ready to come out. And I'm telling you, these noodles are way chewier and bouncier and so much more yummier than the shelf stable version. But try it out and see what you think. Okay, so I also wanna do some baby spinach here as well. I'm just gonna lightly blanch it in that noodle cooking water, pop that into my bowl, and here we go with that amazing broth again. I mean, I just can't get over the color. Look at the clarity, it's amazing. And then add a skewer or two of teriyaki chicken, sprinkle over your spring onion and a few sesame seeds, and there you go. A classic Japanese udon noodle soup. It is a thing of beauty. It's simple and yet everything here is done right. And it will, should taste amazing. Ah, oh, look at that soup. It's like savory on a whole nother level. <laughs> it's savory, delicious, comforting. These udon noodles, ah. Oh. You need to try it. That's all I'm gonna say, so good, yum.